the TIG reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders are fabulous machines but like all reel-to-reel -reel tape recorders they require periodic maintenance. The biggest problem is the uh, oils and the grease uh, that, that were very bad quality in the 70s, not as good as today's of course with synthetic greases and oils and uh, basically they have dried out and uh, things are stuck and uh, people may not even realize because the pinch roller uh, may move uh, uh, you know in contact with a capstan shaft uh, but in fact the bearing system may not be working and it may be rotating around the, uh, the threads of the, sh the shaft that are loosened up and that's one of the biggest problems. Uh, if you buy a tape recorder, a TIG tape recorder, another one, uh, and you don't know if lubrication has done, then you need to disassemble all these mechanisms, clean them up, maybe polish them, and re oil and re grease them. So uh, why did I make this video? There are a couple of good YouTube videos that show uh, this process of uh, disassembling and uh, lubricate, lubricating the pinch roller uh, shaft and uh, bushing. Uh, but then uh, they're not really complete. They don't show you, for example, at the end what you have to do to uh, readjust the tension and uh, what tools to use, uh, how to do it exactly, etc., etc. Regarding the tools to be used, uh, they are shown on the slides, you need uh, Allen wrenches, uh, number 4 Phillips screwdriver and a 9mm uh, uh, pipe wrench, uh, isopropyl alcohol, a good quality grease, I use uh, Teflon uh, Super Lube, but there are many other solutions, people may argue with that. Uh, you need synthetic oil uh, for basically lubricating a machine machines like uh, tape decks and uh, sewing machines and so on. I use 1500 uh, uh, grade uh, sandpaper for uh, sanding uh, corrosion and then I use uh, metal polish to uh, refinish uh, the shafts and bearing surfaces and also use a, a gauge, a spring gauge to uh, measure the tension uh, after the adjustment in, is done on the, uh, uh, on the roller adjustment. To have uh, the best access, you need to remove the back cover of the tape deck and also the side panel. Loosen the aluminum cover that uh, covers the uh, pinch roller. It's an aluminum part. Be very careful when you remove it, there's a tiny washer uh, behind it stuck to it or sometimes stuck, stuck to the pinch roller itself. Then you pull the pinch roller itself and there's another washer in the back. It's slightly different because it sits in a groove and you need to remove that one and make sure you don't mix them up when you put it back. Uh, then you unscrew the aluminum, co aluminum cover, the aluminum cap that surrounds the uh, capstan shaft. Next, you need to remove the uh, bracket that uh, holds the uh, back of the uh, capstan wheel uh, using the two screws and the Phillips screwdriver. You may have to uh, uh, remove some of the clamps for the cables that are in the way. Make sure you don't drop any screws below because it will be a nightmare to recover them. Uh, you may want to put a towel or something below that so if the screws uh, fall, they fall in the towel. You may also have to remove a PC board that may be right in the front of it, but be very careful because one of the screws actually have a, a plastic washer behind and also uh, a, a, a knot, I believe. Uh, but the uh, plastic washer is very critical because it insulate, insulates a transistor from the chassis. So don't lose that and put it back very carefully, otherwise you will create a short circuit. So now you need to remove the capstan wheel from the shaft and at the same time remove the belt from it. Uh, be very careful, uh, uh, there's a very tiny washer behind the wheel, usually it's stuck to the wheel because of the oil, 
but locate it and make sure you remove it and save it. And maybe this is time for a new belt also. Uh, but in any case, uh, clean up all the parts, make sure that there is no rubber residues anywhere. The way to remove the wheel is by using a tiny Allen wrench and there are two uh, screws. Make sure the Allen wrench is inserted all the way. So now that the wheel is out of the way, you need to remove that little uh, bracket with a U-shape uh, cut in it with uh, removing the two screws. So remove the two screws in the bracket and uh, don't lose the screws. There's a blade uh, that connects the pinch roller mechanism to the solenoid shaft. So you need to remove the two very small screws that hold the solenoid bracket or, or, uh, or blade uh, attached to the control arm. And for that you use a number four uh, Phillips screwdriver. It looks big, but believe me, it fits perfectly well. So do not drop these screws, they're very tiny. Put something below so you can catch them. And now you need to remove the uh, switches or the switch assembly that is in the way of the control arm by uh, removing the two uh, tiny screws. They're very long. Uh, make sure they stay with the uh, uh, switch assembly because there is an insulation board, it's orange or brown, between the two switches and also there's a back plate and it needs to be oriented properly because the bottom of it is actually the uh, limit uh, for the uh, tensioner arm. It's very important that the tab is at the bottom, so please keep all that together. So now you can see the uh, pinch roller arm, me uh, mechanism arm, with a barrel which is yellow, uh, gold, and the shaft inside which is uh, a silver metal. The two are stuck together because of the oil, so to remove the uh, to pull out the, uh, the bushing, basically the arm uh, with the cylindrical part, you need to apply heat with a hairdryer and pull, pull towards you uh, strongly, but not to the point of deforming that uh, cylindrical uh, bushing. So if you use pliers, uh, be careful to, uh, uh, to not damage it. So now that you have removed that uh, a pinch roller uh, arm and uh, bearing assembly. You can also remove the uh, capstan shaft assembly by removing the last of the third screws and you can disassemble, pull the shaft out from the other side and uh, clean the bushing, clean the shaft and relubricate. So the shaft uh, very often is loose but whether it's loose or not, uh, remove it with a 9mm socket wrench uh, so you can clean it. And now clean the shaft and the arm with alcohol and Q-tips. Uh, make sure that there is nothing left inside the barrel. Usually there is oxidation there, so clean as much as you can. Uh, to uh, clean the shaft, I, I had to use 1500 sandpaper and then polish it with a metal polish. And I did that on two of my recorders. So all of them has the, have these problems, uh, this problem unless uh, someone fixed it. So put the pass together to, to make sure that uh, the shaft uh, uh, slides freely and rotates freely inside the barrel and that it fits all the way in, uh, all the way to bottoming uh, the hex. Now to make sure that uh, the shaft will not uh, loosen up again too easily, apply thread locker, you know, Loctite for example, adhesive inside the threads, uh, inside the shaft, and then reinstall it and tighten with a 9mm uh, pipe wrench and make sure it's tight, snug, but not to the point of deforming the aluminum face. I put a good coat of grease all over the shaft, all around. Reinstall the control arm, make sure it uh, goes all the way to the bottom so you can see the end of the shaft through, through the barrel and uh, make sure it rotates freely. Reinstall the two switches and reattach the solenoid bracket with the two small screws 
I usually apply a nail polish, you know, varnish on them to make sure that they are locked. And Reinstall the capstan shaft assembly, the bearing system, and the three screws and the little bracket with a U-shaped cut. Reinstall the capstan wheel uh, with the Allen wrench. Uh, don't tighten uh, the screws, just tighten one of them very uh, gently. The capstan shaft will need to stick out of the wheel slightly. The amount is determined by the amount of play uh, when the bracket is installed. So you're going to have to install the bracket and then, uh, you know, uh, feel the, uh, the play and uh, make sure that you adjust the shaft so that the play is very, very minimal. Uh, Tick says 0.1 millimeter. Personally, I adjust it so that it's barely uh, uh, moving. Now reinstall the belt if it's in good condition or put a new one in and make sure it's in the right uh, pulley of the motor. You can fill it with your fingers. Uh, the one that has the smallest diameter is the 60 Hz version for the United States. Now apply grease on the uh, holding bracket uh, where the back, uh, where the end of the capstan shaft is going to touch. Reinstall the bracket with the two mounting screws and apply varnish to them. Make sure that the capstan shaft can slide forward and back with a tiny, tiny amount. Now it's time to lubricate everything. So from the front, you're going to need to uh, lubricate the pinch roller shaft and uh, the capstan shaft. So to lubricate the capstan shaft, uh, if you haven't done it before from the other side, you need to remove the little rubber uh, washer uh, so you can apply the oil below the washer. The washer is there to prevent the oil from going in the front of the shaft uh, where the tape is going to contact. At the same time, you can lubricate all the motors. Some decks require all three motors to be lubricated like the A2300. The A3300 uh, has uh, lubricating ports for the uh, capstan motor but not the others depending on the model and there are, there are always two bearings which means there are two lubrication ports uh, per motor so finally reinstall the uh, uh, pinch roller um, and uh, the caps on the front face and then uh, verify that the pinch roller is working properly when you turn the uh, deck on and uh, uh, press play. Uh, then you're going to need to adjust the tension or check it at least using the spring scale. And the scale uh, has to be uh, basically rated uh, uh, over five pounds so that you can measure accurately uh, uh, 4.4 to five pounds. That's the range. Uh, if you're not sure, uh, read the uh, service manual. On the back of the pinch roller, there is a little groove and the thread will uh, basically uh, uh, fit uh, nicely in there and uh, not touch uh, the pinch roller. We, we don't need any friction there. Attach the thread to the spring gauge and uh, press play on the uh, tape recorder, powered on of course, and uh, pull the spring gauge in the direction of uh, the spring roller uh, when it moves until uh, the spring roller stops rotating just at the, that moment and note the value of the tension. Now if the, the range of the uh, tension is not within 4.4 to 5 pounds you're going to need to adjust the solenoid in the back and there are two screws to three screws to do that so you loosen them up and you uh, slightly and you need to move that the whole assembly the solenoid assembly to the left to increase the tension or to the right to decrease it and now you're pretty much done it's all fixed and uh, thank you for watching don't forget to subscribe subscribe to my channel and also give me a thumb up if you liked the video uh, it's always appreciated and if you have any questions as you I usually post them on my channel thank you very much and have a great day